Um, we spoke earlier about the, the role of TT Club and um, as, as uh, an insurer, but also there's a great deal of knowledge and expertise within the club. And obviously it's in your interest to, to reduce the uh, number and severity of container ship fires. What, what's TT done um, to, to help its members, let's say, uh, address these issues? Well, I guess the first point is that over the years, TT Club, amongst a number of other insurers, have taken a lot of effort to publicise incidents and try to uh, show what good practice looks like, uh, whether it's in guidance, the book it right, pack it tight, type documentation that says here is something important for you to take account of and we have our own publications what we call stop loss publications and also some handbooks that look at a variety of the risks that we've seen so we look to uh, extract the information that we're getting on the claim side and play it back with some additional advice so that's a, a general uh, process that's been going on for for years um, more recently uh, TT Club has been collaborating with other industry partners to try to promote good practice in terms of cargo packing. And we call this cargo integrity or hashtag fit for freight, uh, which is trying to identify there is uh, a fitness to put things in the freight supply chain. Uh, and where that happens, then things can be expected to have a good outcome where they're not done consistently. Uh, then there can be problems. And that in, applies not just to dangerous goods and the specifics around declaration or marking, placarding, or the rest of it, but around basic uh, ways that cargo is packed, whether it's eccentrically loaded, whether it's properly secured. Uh, obviously, humidity can impact uh, packaging, and that needs to be taken account of depending on the journey that's going on. So we particularly go back to a CTU code, which the IMO, ILO, UNECE agreed uh, through their processes in 2014. And that isn't the first time, obviously. There have been lots of iterations of guidance that have been put through internationally. But this is now a code which has a bit more legal significance and becomes, if you like, the, the broad framework under which everything can be operating. So we're looking to promote the CTU code uh, and help people not just to be aware of it, but learn how to comply with the elements that are appropriate to the commodity or the packing that they are undertaking in order to uh, give a good outcome to the supply chain. And do you think shippers are sufficiently aware of the CTU code? I think generally the industry as a whole is not sufficiently aware and that's partly why it's a collaborative effort. So we work with the Global Shippers Forum, so trying to get into the shipper community, uh, shipper associations and shippers of particular commodities. We're working with Ichika, uh, who are obviously looking more specifically at the port and terminal interface, working with World Shipping Council and then recently this year we started working with CINS as well, drawing their uh, influence in and loosely also with some of the uh, competence authorities and other NGOs who are interested in shipping. So what we're hoping to do by building a sort of broad stakeholder group who have a common vision to empower uh, the message so that more people understand actually it is important and it's important to all the stakeholders both directly involved in the supply chain and indirectly. And I think indirectly is one of the interesting parts of our, our outreach. Uh, so earlier this year, we were talking to customs authorities and saying, actually, when you see something that causes you concern on the customs side, it quite often is going to be causing concern on the safety side. So let's start to have a bit more of a dialogue instead of this sort of silo approach, mm. try to understand actually if something's going, gone wrong here, it's more than likely going to go wrong somewhere else for some other stakeholder who may not be involved in the direct trade supply chain, uh, but will have an influence over the way things are done. And that's been quite a useful dialogue. And I think there are a number of other uh, initiatives that we can take to try to deconstruct the supply chain and understand what the levers are and how we can put it back together in a way that increases the likelihood of good behavior for every stakeholder through the supply chain.
So, and, and if we can do that, then you will hoover up the dangerous goods as well. Absolutely. The dangerous goods are inherently part of the entirety, and it depends who you talk to as to what level that is. I think the, the normal benchmark is around 10% of maritime cargo is declared dangerous goods, because the sort of elephant in the room is how much of it is going through that's not declared. Uh, and if that was another 10%, that is quite significant. So it seems to me that you've got uh, all the ducks lining up now. You've got the insurers, you've got the ship, um, shippers, ship owners, ports and terminals. Can we look forward to an improvement in the... Um, in the, in the record of, of uh, container ship fires and dangerous goods incidents at sea, do you think? I would hope that in the medium term, yes, we can. Uh, we all understand that this is a very complex uh, business supply chain and the, the number of different stakeholders and the attitudes to the way that cargo is uh, put into the supply chain. Uh, and therefore, I don't for a moment underestimate how much we're needing to talk to different people and how long it may take. And it may well be well past our retirement before we actually see a material change. But yeah. I still feel that it's worth getting this ball into the game uh, and trying to make a difference because future people will actually see a benefit. I'm glad to hear it. Peregrine, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Peter. Good speaking. Thank you.